Hi, this is Analog Girl, and today I want to talk to you about the Beaulieu R16. The Beaulieu R16 is a French 16mm reflex camera, and it was made between the 1950s and I think the late 70s, possibly into the 80s. I'm not sure exactly when Beaulieu stopped making this model. The reason that I chose this particular camera to talk about today is because this is actually the very first 16 millimeter camera that I bought when I was still a student. And I call him Christophe because I'm a dork and I like to name my cameras. Um, so the R16 has the reputation of being finicky, of being a little bit delicate, maybe unreliable. That's not entirely fair. It's definitely not as sturdy as something like a uh, Bolex or an Arri S that's made from one hunk of metal but it's very lightweight and compact and it has a lot of features in it so I think it's really great and I, I love mine and I would never give it up. So Bolu made a few different models of the R16. This one is the three lens model. It has a rotating turret similar to what you would see on a Bolex and this is great if you like to shoot with prime lenses. These are C-mount primes. This one is the special zoom. It has a fixed turret and a single lens port. This particular zoom, this is a Fujinon TV zoom. It's a more modern C-mount zoom. It's plastic, it's decently sharp. It does vignette a little bit on this camera, uh, depending on your focal length, but it's not horrible. It's definitely usable. And it, this is it's really fast, it's a 1.2. So, I, if I know I'm gonna be shooting in a, in the, in a really uh, low light situation, I'll bring this lens along, just in case. Because it's nice to get that extra stop. Now this is the, um, the bowl, uh, automatic, the R16 automatic. And this one has a, this is, you can see it's a little bit heavier. It's got an Ingenue 12 to 120, which is a really common zoom lens that you'll see a lot for 16 millimeter. And it has a, a servo zoom, and it also has an auto iris function, and you can turn those on or off depending on how you like to shoot. I personally don't shoot auto. So I would say turn it off and use a light meter, but that depends on how you like to shoot. So I'd like to show you some of the accessories that you might find for your R16. This is just a simple pistol grip and it's made from plastic, super ergonomic. It's great. This is the flat base and this allows you to screw a tripod in tripod plate into the bottom. It has two mounting holes. It also allows you to put the camera down without it tipping over. The problem with the base of the R16 is that it's, first of all, it's narrow and it's off center. So you can't really sit the camera down normally. It just flops, it tips over. This is a turret, re re a turret reinforcing plates turret reinforcing plate this is for okay so if you have this version of the r16 this model the three lens turret model and you wanted to mount a heavy zoom like this ingenue 12 to 120 you obviously you could screw it on here and it will mount. However, the weight of that lens is so heavy that you risk bending the actual turret and then your lens will not focus because the turret will be bent and your flange distance will be different and you'll have to get your camera fixed and you'll be sad. So if you do want to shoot with a heavy zoom on the three lens model, you need to seek out this this uh, reinforcing plate and it screws into the camera body and allows you to use a heavier zoom without damaging your camera. So this is a 200 foot magazine uh, for the R16. You unscrew the cover and then you just screw the magazine on. Be careful, not all models of R16 can take the magazine, so make sure that yours has the cover before you go and purchase a magazine. Let's open it up. 
you can see that it has a feed and a take up side Mickey Mouse style magazine. Um, now the problem with the magazine, it's not a problem per se, just difficulties, I would say. So, okay. This takes these 200 foot daylight spools. These are hard to find. They're a little bit rare. They go for good money on eBay. And also you can't buy film on these anymore. So you have to buy 400 foot loads of film and either you have to uh, spool it down yourself or you can get the lab to do it. And then you have to, you know, like that's just an extra expense that you'll have to incur. And then once you've shot your 200 foot load, you would have to spool it off the reel because you don't want to send this to the lab. You could, but you might not get it back. And then, you know, then you're being in the situation where you have to buy another one or call the lab and see if they can find it and send it back to you. So if I were to shoot with a 200 foot load in the magazine, I would definitely end up spooling it down onto a core or and into a can and sending it back to the lab that way. So it's a little bit more complicated. Let's talk about a couple of battery options for the R16. So this is a lithium ion battery pack that I purchased from an eBay seller who's based in Canada. It will last for approximately four 100 foot rolls. And it came with a, it came with its own little charger. You can see that the cord is a little bit short, so you can't use it as in a battery belt situation in a fanny pack. So what I've seen people do is that they just Velcro it to the cover. Personally, I don't really like to Velcro anything to my camera. So how I use it, this may or may not be an option for you. <laughs> I stick it in my bra strap and I plug it in to the camera and then I'm good. You may not have that option, so I, you may have to go the Velcro route. Now this, this is my favorite. I love the battery handle. I feel like this is such a great design. I just got this one reselled professionally and it will last for 14 or so 100 foot rolls. That's a lot. I can't imagine that I'll ever shoot 14 rolls in a day on this camera, but it's nice to know that I have the option. So these are common. You might even, if you buy one, you might have this handle and then you can send this out to get reselled. If you're handy, you might be able to resell it yourself even. So I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about the Bolliu R16. Don't get put off by its diva reputation. It's a really fun camera to shoot with and you'll get great results as long as you treat it with care. Next time I'll talk about loading the camera and shooting with the camera. So look out for part two of this video in a few weeks. I'll see you next time.